Hello and welcome to another GCSE OCR Business Studies revision video. We're going for human resources this time and hopefully going to get through 3.1, 3.4 and 3.7, although I do only have 15 minutes on the clock. So let's get started. So we've mentioned this before. Each function always starts with the role of. So the role of human resources covers three areas. They essentially have to identify how many workers the business needs, the type of worker. Now that could be full-time, part-time, or it could be skilled, unskilled, qualified, level of training, and so on. And they also have to work out how they can get the best from their employees. Now, obviously, this is what we're going to look at over the next two or three presentations anyway. So what influences the human resource needs of the business? Well, it will look at what it produces. So does it need a lot of human resources for that or can it use machines and so on? Um, is it a product? Is it a service? Again, affecting the human resources needs there. It will also look at how much it produces. If it's a mass production, again, that will affect how many people it needs and the skills that they need. The method of production. Now, we don't study production until year 11, uh, but we need to think about how is that produced? Again, is it using machines? Is it using people? And so on. Uh, we need to think about when staff are needed. So actually the practicality of shift work, people being in in the morning, covering the evenings, um, working overnight and so on. They also need to look at the jobs that need to be completed. Again, who's completing those jobs? Are they skilled jobs? Are they quali special qualifications needed for those jobs? And of course, there will be a budget available for this. So how much money do they have to spend on staff? Uh, staff is usually one of the biggest expenses in a business anyway, so they need to get that right. OK, so we're going to start with recruitment and selection, actually bringing workers into the business. So think about why businesses need to recruit. Uh, again, there are four reasons that the syllabus focuses on. So when you start up a business, you need new staff to get the business up and running. Then the growth of a business. Now, remember, we said that growth focuses on the physical size. So when the business grows, you need more staff. Um, it could be to fill a skills gap. So if you need an accountant, then you have to hire someone who can do accounts. Uh, so if you're missing a specific skill, then, uh, you know, that's why you need to recruit someone. And then, of course, the most obvious one is just to simply replace those who leave. So as you get people who leave the business, you naturally need to replace them. OK, now, when it comes to replacing people uh, or recruiting people, I should say, uh, it can be done either internally or externally. Now, if you actually physically need more people, then it's probably going to be external recruitment. But don't forget, it might be that you are promoting people internally. Um, they're filling management jobs so you can then hire people in from uh, lower level. Over on the right hand side, you can see the recruitment media. Now, this covers both internal and external recruitment. Um, obviously, some of it might only be internal, like a notice board, um, but it's where you can basically advertise jobs. And when you're thinking about advertising jobs, there will be a cost involved, especially if you're talking about a startup business or a small business. So something like the website or social media, um, word of mouth, uh, email and a notice board isn't going to cost you anything. Uh, the cost will go up between a local and a national newspaper and a specialist magazine. Um, and the job centre, well, I don't know, there's many jobs around uh, there these days, but you, it's still an option. Uh, just think about how are you going to reach the type of person you need so if you do need someone to fill a skills gap then you might be advertising in specialist magazines whereas if you're a small business you know the local newspaper putting it on your own website um, using social media could draw people in to the job okay so how can you actually apply for a job or again it's up to you to choose the methods that you would want to use um, you could use all of these you could use some of these you don't have to use just one it's normally be a combination of things so you might actually get people to either do a letter of application or an application form 
send it with a CV and then you still might do an interview and a group activity and ask for references. So you could actually use all of these. The thing to remember is with each stage, you're kind of eliminating or shortlisting, getting rid of people that you don't want. So if you do use an application form and you get 30 applicants, you'll go through that pile of applicants and get it down to maybe four or five that you want to interview. Um, at that interview, you'll also get them to perhaps do a group activity or you might get them to do a presentation and that will help eliminate those down. The key thing to remember with all of these different um, selection methods is that you are never doing anything on a trial basis. One of the biggest mistakes students make is that they'll go through a selection process and then at the end they'll say, oh, and then we'll offer the job to one person temporarily and then if not we'll give it to someone else you can't do that okay legally as well um, also if you did do that so somebody does the job for a couple of weeks you don't like them so you think oh i'll offer it to the person who was at the interview well they may now have a job so please 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 remember that when you get to the end of the interview process or the selection process you appoint somebody and they are your permanent employee, which is why you have to make sure you've used a range of these methods to make sure you've got the right person for the job. OK, it's not a temporary appointment. It's an appointment that happens at the end of this process. You can't change your mind. So therefore, you need to make sure that you've got the right person. OK, and then finally, employment law. Now. You've got to remember that discrimination is illegal. Um, all you have to worry about is the Equality Act. Now, it is the Equality Act 2010, but you don't need to know the details of the year. You just have to know what the Act kind of covers. OK, so essentially um, a business must not pay workers differently for the same work. This is especially true if you're talking about gender or ethnicity. Um, but you should just simply pay it is the law that workers are paid the same for the same work. You also must not favour people when recruiting. You must appoint the right person for the job, whether that person is male, female, black, white, whatever. OK, uh, similarly with promoting or training workers, you cannot discriminate them. You cannot stop somebody from being promoted or stop someone from training simply because of the colour of their skin or their sexuality. Um, or anything okay and a work a business must also not allow others to be mistreated so you must have in place policies to stop that discrimination now because we're not worried about the intricacies of the law here we just need to know that you cannot be discriminated against and I should point out that the Equality Act it covers a whole range of things so it does cover age gender ethnicity it also covers uh, sexuality um, disability so you know it's all covered in that act for the business syllabus for any exam questions what it's more likely to focus on is what is the impact of discriminating or the impact of being a good business which is what's on the right hand side of this slide so if it does discriminate then a business will find that its staff are less motivated and you have the knock-on effects throughout the organization of having less motivated staff you may also find that workers leave quite regularly and that leads to increased costs of recruitment and trying to replace them the business itself will develop a poor reputation it will get known for being a business where you know that just sort of discrimination goes on people won't want to apply for jobs there and obviously, if it's actually proved, then the business can be fined. And that's an additional cost, along with all of the bad reputation that will bring with it. Of course, if a business takes action to stop discrimination, obviously, that's good for its employees. But again, think about the impact of that on the business. It is going to increase the costs for the business because they're going to have to pay everyone fairly. OK, so if they have got some discrepancies, they're going to have to either bring pay up or, or bring pay down and that can cause problems. It's going to take time to rewrite all of their policies and make sure that those policies are then implemented and trained all their staff and so on. And it does mean increased monitoring because that one on the other side about allowing others to be mistreated. If you if you're allowing other employees to discriminate, 
uh, the boss is ultimately responsible for that. So they've got to make sure there are things in place to monitor what's going on. OK, so don't think about employment law as just being about the Equality Act. And that will be the question. The question is more likely to talk about the impact of that law. Finally, as part of employ uh, employment law, we've got contracts of employment. It's very specific in your syllabus about contracts of employment. Um, they include a statement of particulars, and that's where it gives you the actual details of the job, your hours, etc., what you're paid. Now, that statement of particulars must be given within eight weeks of starting the job. OK, uh, so not necessarily a full contract, but certainly the statement of particulars. Uh, you're also entitled to four weeks holiday. That could go up uh, if a business offers more. But legally, um, everyone in the UK is entitled to a four week holidays. Um, and also, at the moment, you cannot work more than 48 hours a week. This is part of the Working Time Directive, which is European law. That may change after Brexit. But um, at the moment, you cannot work more than 48 hours a week unless you opt out of that system. So just make sure that you understand those basic facts about uh, the contract of employment. And again, talk about how that could impact on both the employee and the business. The business would obviously have to make sure that they got those particulars out, that they were giving that entitlement. They're all cost to the business. Uh, but the worker obviously benefits from having that job security and that holiday entitlement um, and also not having to work 48 hours a week. So what are the exam tips here? Well, again, as always, read the case study. Make sure you know what you're talking about. Make sure you know whether you are talking about the impact on the business or the impact on the employee. That will be where you go wrong. OK, make sure you understand what you're talking about in the question. With recruitment and selection methods, justify your choices. Why are you using that recruitment method? Why are you using that selection method? OK, is it relevant to that business? So if you're talking about doing a test in a restaurant, then it might be that you get the chef to cook something. Make sure that it, it fits in. OK, that fits in with that one, understanding what the job is about so you can make the relevant recommendations. Don't just say they could do a test. You would actually say they could cook a recipe. And remember to focus the, on the effects on a business. Yes, employees are involved and sometimes you're asked about them. But remember that you are doing business studies. So very often the, the main thrust of the question is about how whatever you've chosen, whatever process it is, how it affects the business, especially when it comes to those laws. OK.